You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Titus with Brady Randall. This is Kurt Bjorklund. Welcome to Five Good Minutes. Today we're going to be considering Titus 1 and we're going to get to hear from Brady Randall. Brady serves as our campus pastor at our Butler campus and as part of just our great staff here at Orchard Hill. So enjoy today's teaching. Well, today we come to the end of Titus 1, where Paul exposes the insubordinate and false teachers. Here's what we read in verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupted. And their corruption comes out of the inside with their minds and consciences, and it comes onto the outside with their works and teaching. I think Jesus also summed it up best when he said in Matthew 19, verses 18 to 20. But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, These are what defile a person. So I think what we're hearing here is that if the mind is corrupt, it can't accurately then inform the conscience. And our consciences need to be informed by the truth or else it doesn't function as it is supposed to, as a warning system that God designed. And you know how this works in your own life. Initially, maybe your conscience tells you this is not a good idea. This is not a road or path I should be going down. But the more you avoid your conscience or the more you dismiss it or are informed by other contrary views, the less effective it turns out to be. When I was a kid, I went to a movie theater and I remember for the first time I snuck in some candy into the theater as a kid. And I felt really guilty about it the whole time and I was worried I would get caught and I didn't know what I would say or do if I actually got caught. My heart was racing and then it happened. Near the end of the movie that we were watching, the fire alarm system started to go off in the whole theater, and I was terrified. Why? Not because I thought there was a fire danger, but because I thought those alarms were attended for me, because of me, because I snuck in food and candy into the theater. Someone in charge had detected that I brought in my own candy into the movie theater. That's what I thought. That's my heart was racing. And when I found out that that wasn't the case, I was definitely relieved. But then I ended up later on taking candy in again. And I felt less guilty this time because I got away with it. And then I would do it again and again and again. And just, you know, just so you know what candy I was using, it was Sour Patch Kids, if you have to know. And I began to rationalize in my mind why it was okay, because they were already uh, price gouging. Candy doesn't actually cost five times what it's supposed to. They're already ripping us off for tickets in the movie theater. So that's my excuse to get some free candy in there. We see that thought process is sort of what happens when we begin to dismiss and rationalize sin. When we make provisions for fleshly desires. Eventually we become less convicted and we rationalize. And as Titus reminds us, this can ultimately lead to a seared conscience. Talk is cheap. He concludes uh, chapter 1, verse 16, with this statement. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. Eventually, you know a tree by its fruit. A tree that produces no apples can hardly be called an apple tree. And while this is certainly a warning to false teachers, let it also be a warning for all of us who claim to know God. May it be our prayer that by our actions, we would not deny him. And maybe you're listening today and you don't claim to know God. And one of the reasons that you have a problem with Christianity is because those who claim to know him don't remind you or look or sound anything like Jesus. Christians can often be the best representation of Jesus and the worst. But our hope and prayer today for you, for me, is that as you continue to walk through Titus, is that you would see and experience the sweetness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That you would keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, who's the author and finisher of your faith. 
and that you'd be so overwhelmed by his love and grace and power that you'd be overwhelmed to give your life to him and walk according to his ways. And so let me just pray for you. Let me pray for me that this would be true for us today. Father God, I thank you for our study of Titus chapter 1. I pray, God, that if there's anything that has been said that doesn't reflect you, that you would help us to forget it. But God, as we've heard from your word in Titus chapter 1, I pray that it would cause us to know and experience Jesus Christ for the first time or afresh and anew. God, help us to represent you and your people and your leaders well, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.